In this video, we're going to take a look at a topic that's a little bit different for chemistry. Seems maybe more like physics at first glance, but we will shortly see how we're going to use the concept of waves to think about interactions of light and molecules. So the learning objectives covered in this video are to describe a wave in terms of its frequency, wavelength, and amplitude, and to explain various properties of waves which include interference and diffraction. First of all, let's take a look at some of the characteristics of a wave. Waves occur in many contexts in the physical world, and for our purposes in chemistry, we'll mostly be focusing on electromagnetic waves. But before we really launch into that, we're going to spend a couple minutes reviewing some basic definitions for waves. Nodes are areas where the wave crosses the axis, or basically where the function is zero. The amplitude is the height of the wave, and it goes from the axis to the minimum, which is the trough, or the maximum, which is the crest. And then finally, we also can talk about the wavelength, which is the distance between two equivalent points on the wave. Usually, this is discussed as the distance between adjacent crests, adjacent troughs, or alternating nodes. There are also a couple different types of waves, and the ones we're going to focus on right now are traveling waves. Traveling waves are waves that travel in time and space, and they have a defined speed, which is how fast a single point of the wave is moving, and it's going to, that speed is going to be equal to the wavelength times its frequency. The frequency is a quantity where we're defining the number of wavelengths or cycles of a wave, that pass through a given point in a given period of time. The units for the frequency of a wave are generally given in hertz, which is the same as saying cycles per second. How often does the same point of a wave, so for example, the crest or the trough, pass through the same point of space in a given period of time? Since the speed of a wave, which I'm going to call s, is equal to its frequency times the wavelength, we can say that for any two waves traveling at the same speed, as the frequency gets larger, the wavelength is going to have to get smaller, or vice versa, because they're going to be inversely proportional. And as I mentioned, we're mostly going to be focusing on electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are waves that travel with the speed of light, so they all have the same speed, and that speed is equal to 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, which is also given the symbol C. And electromagnetic waves are simply an electric field and a magnetic field which travel through space at that same speed. And they're perpendicular to each other, the two fields, and they're also perpendicular to the direction of travel. So that's illustrated by these axes here, where the wave is traveling in this direction, the electric field is going to be perpendicular in one direction, and the magnetic field is perpendicular in the other direction. For our purposes in this class, we're generally going to ignore the magnetic field and just look at the electric field. So electromagnetic waves can have various frequencies and intensities, and that's going to correspond to different wavelengths. If we're thinking about electromagnetic waves in the visible region of the spectrum, so we would be able to wait, correlate the different wavelengths with different colors, and this goes in, in the colors of a rainbow, which you probably learned about at some point in the distant past. Different amplitudes will correspond to different brightness of that light. So a wave with a small amplitude is still going to appear at the same color as a wave with a bigger amplitude. The amplitude doesn't affect the color, but it does affect how bright it appears. And visible light is really only one region of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So the electromagnetic spectrum covers a broad range of waves with different frequencies and energies and wavelengths. And this plot here shows some of the applications of those different wavelengths of light. This scans everything from radio waves to cosmic radiation. In chemistry, usually what we're interested in is things between the X-ray and infrared, or sometimes even up to the microwave region of the spectrum, 
because those also correspond to different molecular processes. So there's a couple of properties that are unique to waves. The first of those that we wanna look at is interference. And interference is just an interaction between waves. So what happens when waves interact is if their phases are lined up, if their maxima occur at the same point, they're gonna to add together in what we call constructive interference, which gives a higher overall amplitude. They could also add destructively where they're completely out of phase. And in that case, they would totally cancel each other out. Oftentimes it'll be somewhere in the middle. So you'll get sort of a range of constructive and destructive interference. And that can lead to patterns, which we would call interference patterns. Another property that's associated with waves is diffraction. And that's the idea that if you have a plane wave and it passes through a slit or a barrier, it's going to diffract, meaning it's going to bend as it goes through. And that's different than particle behavior where particles should pass straight through. So they wouldn't bend based on the edge of, of the barrier. And the combination of interference and diffraction um, comes into play when you're looking at light passing through two different slits. So in this case, the light would hit the slits and it would diffract. And as it diffracts, it bends. And so you get points where the light overlaps in a constructive manner and a destructive manner. And this creates what we would call the diffraction pattern. So this is a characteristic behavior of light. This should not happen with classical particles. So before we end, I want to do a quick demo using this simulation. I will include the link to the simulation in the YouTube site, so please feel free to visit this website and explore for yourself. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the slit experiment and select that one. And so here I have a light, which I can turn on by pushing the button and it's passing through a slit. And we can see as it passes through that slit, it's going to bend and it diffracts. I can go ahead and take this monitoring tool, which will show me the frequency, the, the plot of the, the wave. So it'll show me a plot of the field versus the time. If I stick it just after the, the slit here, we can see that it, it oscillates up and down as the wave passes through. Um, I can also look at what's gonna happen if I change the amplitude. So if I change the amplitude here and decrease it, that will decrease the amplitude of the wave. It's not changing the frequency. It's still going up and down at the same rate, but it does affect how high it's getting. And I could turn that down even further. And the simulation shows that as a decrease in the brightness here. I can also play around with the frequency. So if I increase the frequency, I should expect the oscillations to get closer together. When I do that, um, it's a little hard to see with just the blue, but if I go all the way up to the purple, um, we should be able to tell that or the peaks are getting much closer together as the frequency increases. I could also go the other way. And now we will see a decrease in the frequency where the peaks get further apart. The other property that we talked about was interference. And so we can see that when we put in two slits. We go back to brighter color. And now I'm also gonna turn on the screen here. So the screen shows the diffraction pattern as it's coming through. And I can actually highlight that here. And so what it's actually showing is that as the light comes through and diffracts, it bends and creates areas where there's constructive and destructive interference. And the constructive interference occurs in sort of equally spaced peaks. And in this case, we can see that there's actually a very intense peak, the most intense actually, just behind the barrier. So that's again, this is unique behavior to waves. So I hope you'll take some time to play around with this simulation and you can modify slits. You can see what effect that has on the interference and as well as play around with other properties of waves.